and I was in the last year of my degree program, that is Bachelor's in Science, I was almost in the completion of my degree. I was living with my cousin, who was then affiliated with a political party. As the militancy was very active in, the, in that time, people came to our family house while my cousin resided and they were all armed and they started activities like kidnapping him from the home. It was a kind of fuss in that at the time. But I was also there because my uncle was a CA patient. He had gone to Delhi for the medical checkup for some surgery program. And I was just taking care of my aunt who was hypertensive and who was in need of the medicines at proper time. When this fuss was created by our family that why should you kidnap this guy as he has nothing to do with you, but they started in this filing and I got a blood in spy. And I fell on the ground and I was taken to a nearby hospital where from I was shifted to the state hospital in Srinagar, Kashmir. I remained there for almost two, three months. After that, a series of surgeries happened with us. I had lost my vital organs, like one of my kidney was shattered, spleen was shattered, intestinal tear, liver tear. And when my medical history was, is still being traced by anyone, they say it is a miracle, how you are alive. And the gracious pain that happened to me was spinal cord injury. And doctors declared that you cannot stand up, you cannot walk, you cannot live a life at your own. You are now dependent. It was a very tough time for everyone of us when we are standing for 20 years and you are being asked now you cannot walk. What will be the condition? What will be our psyche? I too wept. I too lamented. I too accused this and that. But that was a great breakthrough in my life. When I started my second life in my bed, I was not knowing what to do, why to go, how to live. And it was a painful time for me. Every time I was in the pain. And now nowadays some people call me that we are in the spinal cord injury, what do you feel? We are in a pain. I say the name of this spinal cord injury is known to everybody, but the second name is the illness and pain. It is a illness of pain. Every time your legs, your body part that has been detached from the spinal cord is painful every time. So, I was not knowing what to do, how to start. I was in the bed, I was in the hospital for complete one year, in painful manner in the bed at home for two years. And after that, everyone was sad. The family who were giving me love, they were in a very sad mood. They were not uh, in a way to enjoy their lives. Although I, uh, my thing was evident. I was lay, lying in the bed. I, my sphere of influence was just the length of my arm. I can't go beyond that. I can't think beyond that. I was not thinking that I will go to other places. I can go outside my home. I can use my washroom. I can eat as my, uh, my own choice. My bed was my whole uh, uh, world and I have to do everything on my bed. And I was always thinking how to come out, what to do. And only thoughts I was getting 
that helped me to come out of the trauma, that there is another Almighty Allah that is at, in the skies, that draws our life, that has created our faith, and He is the owner of this world. I was always getting the kind of uh, thoughts that if a person will build a three-story building, well decorated, very much lovely building, and after two months he will say that he let me dismantle it as one of the portion I don't like. I want to uh, make it of, of other type, other design. I want to do some diamond work on that. Will somebody stop him? No. He will do it. And somebody of us will be without house and we will be saying, how mad he is, how, what is he doing? But he is the owner, but he is the creator. He is the person who, who has made it. So I got that intention like that. And when relatives come to me and they were somewhere saying that this is now liability. Uh, this is a live dead body. This is something that that is something. And everybody was uh, very much uh, sad over my position. And there were a lot of wounds, precious souls in the bad one can't survive without uh, not uh, changing the posture. So I was in the bad condition. But once I was in a uh, very uh, sad mood and I saw my mother very sad. I saw my family members very sad. They were not going out. So I uh, was thinking how to overcome this problem, how to overcome all this. And I was hearing the noises of the children outside my home. They were, uh, even it was a working day, it was a school day, but they were not in the school. And I asked my mother that, I just want to uh, know why these children are in, uh, playing there in the park, why they are not going to the sc school. And she said, maybe uh, they are not willing to go to school. And I proposed her that, let you go and collect some children so that I can start giving education to those who are not in a position to afford it. And my, I started at, <laughs> from my bed, I uh, started giving education to the children who were uh, uh, not in a position to afford education really. Those whose parents uh, were labor, laborers and they were not in a position to buy books for them. The children who are uh, of those who are militants and hate victims, and those parents who are not existing in the world. So, my day started with giving education to the children, and it ended at the 6 p.m. in the evening, and almost 90 children in a day in different groups. So, And these children became part and parcel of me. They always asked me to come, let, let you come and let me visit to a garden. Because I live in Bishbihar, it is the full of Mughal gardens. There are chinar trees, there is a river going, river Jahlim is flowing from that, and both, from both sides there are the parks and gardens, and they took me there. They, I was not willing to get up on this wheelchair, but they started me. They gave me the energy and I went with them to the local garden. I started coming out of my home. And what was outside? It was barriers. Everywhere a person in a wheelchair, not in a position to go in a very easy way. We have to call people, we have to call youngsters. Let you help us to grow this wheelchair. Let you help us to cross these stairs. There was no ramp. There was nothing was available from that there. And after this, I everything stuck in my mind. And seeing the disability from the close range, I just wanted to know what is the status of children with disabilities. Where they are, where they are, what are they doing? And after five years, where those children who whom I start giving education were in eighth class, they are were now in the twelfth class. And I shared my thoughts with them that I want to know the states of the children with disabilities. Where they are? Are they getting the education? Are they anywhere counted? They said, 
let you hire a vehicle and let you go to a village. And we, we started our journey and that we uh, did a search, we did it a kind of census in six local villages. And what we saw, pathetic condition. Children with mental disabilities were tied with the ropes. Children with blindness, they were willing to go to the school, but the school was not there. The, we, they were dropouts because they were asked that you are not, we are not in a position to give you education because you have blindness. You are, you are deaf, you cannot hear. And everyone was dropped out from the school. And at that day, I stopped giving education to the non-disabled children. I started a center, small uh, 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 room, where I uh, got the five local children whom we identified, and two girls with complete blindness, one uh, child with mental disability, uh, uh, two children having a little bit hard of hearing, and they were not in a position to uh, hear the teacher's lessons and I personally started trying to re, uh, give them education. It was a very Herculean task but I didn't give up. I started that center and people start coming to help me. My friends I, and I had got 75,000 rupees and, as an excretia relief for my rehabilitation. That I denied for seven years but I don't want this. Uh, I have a lot of economic problems. My sister is educated. She is my caretaker. She should be given a job. But every time I got a reply from the government, there is no policy to rehabilitate persons who are going to be disabled for a whole of their life. Only 75,000 is the amount that will be given. And after they, seven years of time, I asked, went to the local Tessil office and asked them, give me that. 75,000 feet, and I started investment for the children with disabilities. And my uh, thought is that once you are going to have, uh, have some good, good assignment in the world, sometimes you can't accept it in an easy way. And I was give, given that assignment, but maybe the Creator has thought that he will not be ready to do it wonderfully. So I was given this chair. This is a chair for me and that is why you are cheering for me this time. On this chair I started cheering for the children with disabilities. And people are always saying me, people are always commenting me that Chavit you are, you have been assigned that job. You are, you are um, a savior for them. You have to pray, you have to go on. You have, and my all pain has gone. Now I am very much happy with those who are. And we see that the life of a person with disabilities is very much complicated. It is not because the world is not accessible, but sometimes we see the people have the attitudinal barriers. We are not given the kind of uh, right in a way, uh, we are, but we are given the good names. We are called the differently able, spatially able, Divyan, so many new names, a new government, a new name for the uh, uh, person with disabilities. We have a, one slogan in this world, one slogan in the disability sector, see my ability, not the disability. But, why should we just see my disability? Why not my ability? I am able. I, I can do everything. I am doing everything. And I am proud to be a person with disability because maybe in uh, one walking with the whole of the world as a physically fit person, I would have not accepted the disability. But I have accepted this disability first, and then I, I have accepted the children with disability, and I feel that who, all the children with disabilities are my children, and I have to do everything. I have to take care of their education, health care. I have to give them the better way so that they could be the reasonable citizens of our future, that they can come to the every point. So that is how we see these barriers are segregating the people. Let us build 
barrier-free world. Let us see uh, ability. Let us be apart and not apart. And let us say that we all are one and we should uh, say no to the gun. Weapons. I'm thankful to the person who shot at me that he gave me this opportunity to uh, change my path. But I have a message for everyone who is using the gun, who is using the weapon. Don't shot at anybody. Everyone cannot have breakthroughs. Everyone one have to, may not get a good family support. Everyone may not have a good mind to come out of these situations because I have seen a lot of people after 12 years of injury, 13 years of injury, they are still weeping. They are not in a position to come out because they don't have the family support. They don't have the societal support. Everyone cannot be a Javed who is a single person and uh, let us make the gun silent. Let us make the world a better place to live. Live and let live. Otherwise, <laughs> destroying the lives will not help us. It will give us more troubles. We are losing the manpower. And the greatest resource in this world is human resource. And we are curtailing the human soul. We are killing the human soul. So we are the creators. We should not be the people in test pay, people in uh, underprivileged people. We should be uh, in a position to do something for this world. So let us say no to guns, because guns have only the uh, characteristics uses, that is to destroy, to kill, to bring odds. So let us make this world peaceful so that disabilities, deaths, don't be the hurdle for the people to contribute for the development.